This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Turchie versus Pearson. You all have been together for a year and a half. Uh, Ms. Turchie, why have you brought your boyfriend to court today? I'm here because I think he has been cheating on me with the girl in the apartment that lives directly underneath me downstairs. I've invested over a year with you, so I need to know, because I'm too fine for this. She says she's too fine for, for this. That. Okay. All right. Sounds like you've got a lot of concerns. What's at stake here? I mean, if you find out he's cheating, then what? Your Honor, I just need to know, because if he is cheating, I need to know so I can leave now, because I got a lot of other guys, a lot of other neighbors that want me. It's not just you, boo. <laughs> Guess it's good to have options, huh? She got options. She right. sounds like she got options. Yes, All right. Your Honor. Mr. Pearson, I mean, she says she's got options. So if you're cheating on her, is, are you cheating on her? Of course not, Your Honor. If she can get past the insecurities, we can... We don't... We want to argue. We want to argue about anything. How do you feel about Miss Turchie? <laughs> okay, aside from the lust... Yeah, because that's... The very gonna, obvious <laughs> lust. <laughs> that's what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you see how he... I feel like I ought to give you a knife and a fork the way you looking at her. <laughs> ready to eat her up, huh? He is ready to bounce. I'm... Like, wow! So you want this relationship to work? Of course. Of course. How did you guys meet? Basically, we met at a mailbox. We both live in the same apartment community. So I'm out there getting my mail. I had just, like, worked out. And this guy, like, comes up, like, you know, just a normal guy trying to holler again. I'm like, oh, God, what does he want, you know? I stepped back for a second. I was like... And then I seen his car. And I was like, you know, let me give him a chance. Okay, <laughs> what kind of car does, a, does he have that make you say, let me give you a chance? A Corvette. Oh, okay. okay. So you looked at him and it was like, nah, but then you saw the car? Cause and that's like, and that's what sealed the deal? That's like a seal the deal, but it's like, oh, he got some swag, you know? Ah, you know color okay. swag. All right, so when you first saw her, I'm, I'm what did you think? I'm new to the area. I'm new to the area, so, you know, I went to go check my mailbox and I seen her, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, ooh, who's this little baddie with a fatty? You feel me? So <laughs> I had to, I had to close out fast. Once we went separate ways, when we pulled up to park, we noticed that she lives above me. Oh, like so you are at a, at, a, at a mailbox down the street and then you all realize y'all live right there together. Right. Yes. Well, before the first date, um, I felt like I had to stand out. So oh. um, I had left some flowers at her door. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I kept, like, I kept being uh, persistent, you know what I mean? I would text her, call her. Um, if she needed anything done, I would do anything to just get in her face. Two weeks later, after, you know, the first meeting, we went out, uh, went out to eat, you know, uh, just had a good conversation, uh, good chemistry, and, uh, we went from there. All right, so, Ms. Turchie, did you feel that he was putting on the full court press? He had that swag. He was cool. He was nice. He didn't seem like, you know, a jerk, like, very well-mannered, would open my door, the car door, like, you know, just very respectful. So that stood out, you know? You eventually said, yes, I'll go out with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, because it started out, she liked his car. Yeah. But he kept pushing. He kept pushing. Whatever I got in. Kept pushing. And she fell for him. See how that works? Well, I know I... how that works. Okay. If you remember, <laughs> if you remember, you were just a friend. Yeah. And, and I kept then, pushing. Well, yeah, you did, because I was going out with the guy, and he's like, I want you to do that no more. Yeah. So, so I was like, oh, all right. okay. All right, so give it up for the persistent brothers. There you go. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, this sounds really perfect. He's your neighbor, nice-looking gentleman, nice, nice vehicle. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got the full court press. He's respectful. Why in the world are you here today? I'm here, Your Honor, because, like, he lives right underneath me. So I ring on the bell. She, this woman answers, and she's like, can I help you? I go, is Jarmel here? And she's like, he's not here right now. And she didn't, like, retaliate or question me or cry. Like, she didn't really have too much of a reaction. But I just looked at her, and I was like... I pointed at my car, and I pointed at upstairs, and I go, but who's going to bring my stuff upstairs? My groceries. Whoa. And she kind of just looked at me. She didn't even have a reaction. Like, that's my man. Like, what are you doing here? Like, nothing. So she was so basic. All right, so, Ms. Turchin, you confront this woman. You ask her... I didn't really... I didn't assume, because I'm bad. She's not. So it didn't even cross my mind that this could be a woman that he's, like, involved with. I really thought it was a housekeeper or something. All right. So, Mr. Pearson? Yes, Your Honor. Your girlfriend knocks on the door and finds you're living with another woman. How does that happen? 
Your Honor, this was a, 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 a friend from the past, okay? She was down on her luck. She came to me last minute asking me if, if she can stay with me. We had just started talking when, when she was down on her luck and came to my house. She's being paranoid right now. And she, is she still living with you? No. Okay, so when she was living with you, were you ever sexually active no. with her? I'm trying to figure out why you didn't tell your girlfriend, I, I got another one I didn't tell her because me. it was last minute and I didn't know how long she was gonna stay, so I didn't think it would matter. I thought it was be a quick turnaround, like maybe 90 days. How long does it take you to get on your feet? Doesn't 90 that... days? It doesn't take that long to get on your feet. <laughs> so you weren't gonna... If, if your girlfriend had not knocked on the door, your friend would have stayed there for three months without you telling your girlfriend? I mean, ain't that a probationary period? Like, that's like, that's like 90 days. Like, you can get no. on your feet in 90 days. Yeah. No. Let me answer your question. No. Yeah, yeah. That's you, a no. You'll be on a probationary period, all right. If that's the case, Mr. Cullen's been on probation for 38 years. Because that would no. be a no. A no. You can't have a woman living with you and you not say something. We were supposed to go to the movies and, like, he just started, like, you know, not answering. He's supposed to be in my house. Now it's to the point where it's, like, past 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock and you're still not here. How are we supposed to do the movies? He stood me up. So now he's starting to act suspicious all over again. Did you stand uh, Miss Turchi up? First date, I did clarify to her that I'm a uh, real estate investor and I, my, my schedule is hectic. And on that night, we talked about the movies, but we didn't actually plan it, plan oh my it. my God. You understand? So, so um, that night, I was with a client. And I, and I get that, but you all had a movie Fine. picked out, right? You had a movie picked There's out, no right? There's no romance without finance. You had a movie picked out, right? Yes, we did. And at this point, Jarmel knows my biggest pet peeve, I hate this, is getting ready and then the guy just doesn't show up. That's my number one thing that I hate and he just, whatever. So anyways. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. So let me ask you something. So you believe that he wasn't closing a real estate deal. You believe he was closing some other kind of deal. Yes. All right, okay. Ms. Turchie, right. do you have anything else? Yes. Um, I had a formal event. I had to attend at a mansion in Miami. Um, I had told Jarmel about it weeks prior. It was very, very important to me. He knew it was very important to me. I had planned for this. We had an RSVP, wear a special attire, um, you know, get a limo. Like, it just was a very formal event. So, like, it's like 6 o'clock. He's like, yeah, I'm on my way. 8 o'clock comes, he's nowhere to be found. So, you're just going to stand me up? I paid for my hair and my makeup. I had to buy a ticket not only for me, for me and him. I had to, um... What was the cost of those tickets? They were $600 for both. Wow. All I right, mean, so... it's one thing, a movie, but $600 worth of tickets? So, where were you, Mr. Pearson? Your Honor, that day, my day started very early at 5 a.m. I had to run a whole bunch... I ran a whole bunch of errands. I, I, I hit the gym. So, I called her and told her I'm gonna go home and take a cat nap. Unfortunately, when I, took, I, when I got home and took a cat nap, when I woke up, it was 5 o'clock in the morning. So you went home to take a cat nap, yes. and now you find yourself in the doghouse. In the doghouse. Just wake up, and you're already in it. You slept through the party. I slept through it. Finesse her. Oh, I fell asleep. I took a nap. But Come Ms. on. Ms. Ms. Turchin, you live upstairs from him, right? Yes. Yeah. So you didn't go downstairs and knock on the yeah. door? I went downstairs, I knocked on the door, rang the video doorbell, and nothing. My car was outside. My car was outside. So I knew he was there. I was asleep. So you knew he was there. Yes. You just think he was there with another woman. Yes. How was you not hear somebody not pounding at I'm your door? I'm tired. So you... Okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. What you else? actually saw his car parked in the driveway. Yes, Your Honor. So you knew he was there. Yes. You just think he was there with another woman. Yes. Because why else would you not answer the door? Well, huh. he was asleep. All right. <laughs> He heard it. And you've opened your case today because you're suing to recoup the money that you put out for those tickets. Correct. I think you should pay for both of our tickets because he made me get ready. That's absurd. Did you go to the party? I went to the party. I had All to get right. my hair... Uh, our outfits had to coordinate with each other. I had to spend money on my wardrobe, my makeup. Yeah. Let me ask you this. How much are you asking this court to award you? I'm asking him for $1,600 to okay. reimburse... All right, so I know $600 for the tickets. What is the other $1,000 cover? I had to do my Botox and my lips, and that combined was another 1000 Botox okay. and lips. Your Honor, she's gonna do that regardless. That's crazy, Your Honor. He's I, always I, I telling me... I charge you for a haircut. Get... I would never charge you for a haircut or a car wash. He's always that's telling cr me... That's you crazy. Need... She, she wanted to do that regardless. She wanted to do that regardless. That has nothing to do with you our dinner You told me date. I, you wanted my, me to get my lips done. You said they were looking a little deflated anyways. 
Mr. Pearson, did you commit to go to this party? I did commit. Okay. Ms. Turchie, what do you hope for for this relationship? I hope that he is not cheating. Like, maybe he did a little bit in the beginning when we first met. That's fine. But once we established a relationship and I gave you an ultimatum and you actually evicted the girl, like, there is no reason to cheat after that. You got all this. Why would you mess that up? Well, there it is. Well, to get to the truth, the court has retained the services of licensed private investigator and polygraph examiner Kendall Scholl. Ron, would you please show Mr. Shaw into the courtroom? Yes, sir. Mr. Shell, how are you? Good, Your Honor. Thank you. Good to see you, Mr. Shell. Good to see you, Your Honor. Ms. Turchie has some concerns about her boyfriend. Now, you performed an investigation in this case. Is that right? Yes, I did, Your Honor. So, what did your investigation in this case entail? Our investigation entailed a female associate who went undercover posing as, as a litigant what the, coming what to court this? because she too was being wow. accused of cheating. Her assignment yeah, Her assignment was to find yeah. out if Mr. Pearson is a cheater. She flirted with him to see if he would bite. I didn't even move. I didn't even budge. Look. You're looking at her like I was being nice. You, I know he likes big that's booties. All she got is a butt. Well, that's all you need. Oh boy. All right, what all right. what else happened? At some point, my associate talked about being in Vegas for an event that he too is planning to attend. So my associate asked for his phone number, and I have that tape as well. That's all right, let's see that. Yeah, Your Honor. Hold on. Really? So Sunday night, you said? Huh? Okay. You can't tell I'm not even interested. You just put your phone number in there. Like, I'm that not... That was a fake number. It. Okay. How do you ha prove a... it? And you gave her your Instagram? Wow. I was being social. That's all, right. all it was. It wasn't... So, Mr. Pearson, this lady talked to you about hooking up in Vegas. And you give her... I gave her the cold shoulder at first. But she was so aggressive and kept coming. And I didn't want to be... You know, Remember when we started dating you? You were really aggressive and I was giving you the cold shoulder and look how this turned out. Okay, but... I, I, I'm the hunter. I don't want to be hunted. <laughs> what do you mean? I was chilling. All right, but to further investigate this case, we ordered a polygraph test. And we have those results. Right, Mr. Shaw? Yes, we do, Your Honor. Mr. Pearson was asked, in mid-April, did you have physical sexual contact with a woman the night you stood up Miss Turchie for your movie date? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. Mr. Pearson, you were being deceptive. What happened? Really? All right, let's go to the next question. Did you have physical sexual contact with another woman the night you didn't go to the dinner party? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. On the night of my event, wow. are you kidding me? You could have chose any other night to go out with any other woman. You had to choose that night. You knew that was important to me. I can't believe you would do this to me for some basic Mr. Pearson, you're 0 for 3. Ron, would you please go get Miss Turchie? Yes, Sean. Ms. Turchie, you're yeah. obviously upset. Would you share with Mr. Pearson how you're feeling right now? I mean, like, you always talk about trust and loyalty and you just, like, lie about everything, so now it's just a confirmation. So why would you even pursue me for over a year just to cheat on me? For what reason? If you're gonna be a player, play the game properly! Like, the... <laughs> just saying. Sometimes I hiccup with other women. All right. And so you've done that since you've been dating her? Yes. They don't mean anything to me. Obviously, they meant our relationship, because 
I'm not dealing with this. So um, you're saying you're done? Yes, Your Honor. Well, we still need to rule on the lawsuit. And your claim for the lawsuit was that you spent $1,600. $600 on tickets, $300 for you, $300 for him, plus the cost for your Botox and your lips. Yes, Your Honor. I wish I could award you the full $1,600, but I can't. Because the Botox and the lips, that was for your benefit as well. The ticket that you bought for him, you are entitled to reimbursement for that. And the court is going to order you, Mr. Pearson, to reimburse Ms. Turchie $300 for the ticket for the mansion party event. So ordered. You two are coming up on your ninth anniversary, but cheating allegations have thrown your relationship into turmoil. Ms. Featherston, tell us why you're here. Well, I'm here, Yana, today to bring my husband, Shahid, to court, because I have questions that need answers. I understand. I mean, my rela we've been in together for eight years now. I am a transgender woman, and I feel that maybe, you know, he's losing his interest in me. I mean, our sex life has started to deteriorate, and it's a lot of unanswered questions and things going on, so I need answers. I need help. You know, we hear a lot of couples when one person is accusing the other of cheating that one of the first signs is the sex life decreases. Mr. Johnson, when you have this hanging over your relationship, what is it, what is it like when you all are together? What is home like? That's the bottom line. Well, it's hectic at home, though, because she don't believe me. And, like, if I go to the store, I'll run to the store and run home. Because if I'm gone too long, she'll think I'm doing something else, though. Uh -huh. Just like when we hanging out and if I look at someone too long, she say I'm eye contacting. Like, my <laughs> eyes have mouth, has a mouth, and it'll talk to them. Like, how am I doing this? You know what I'm saying? I can't help the way that I look or if somebody look at me twice or something like that, but I'm not eye talking. I love her from inside out. <laughs> and all of this is causing just a strain on your relationship. Yes, it is, because I have no friends. I don't never stop at a bar and have my own self a cocktail and just sit there for a minute because she'll be thinking that something else is going on. So, Ms. Featherstone, tell me about your meeting. Well, that's an interesting story, Yana, because I... actually I was walking down the street coming from the grocery store. And like I said, I am transgender in the community. I, you know, used to cook Sunday dinners for the uh, kids in the community that was less fortunate and this and that. And I was walking down the street, actually, and I saw this fine red bone walking. Some pretty <laughs> blue, greenish eyes, and his hair was even longer then. And I was like, hey, handsome, how you doing? You know, and he looked at me and kept on walking. So, cooking the Sunday dinner, everybody coming in, the kids coming in, lo and behold, who walked through my door? Shahid. Oh. Uh -huh. And three months down the line, me and him became an item. All right. So you saw him, he showed up, and you locked it down. Yes, I did. I and know. He, this he woman know so... what she want. She <laughs> was... <laughs> and wait, I can understand that, because I saw somebody at a skating rink, and I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. So I Look know what that's about. I yeah. know what that's about. But we're here. <laughs> what are the... I mean, after all this, you figure it out, you all get together, why are we here? What have the warning signs been? Okay, and I... Well, another sign is our sex life. I mean, like I said, you know, our, things have deteriorated. We used to do it five, seven times a day. Like I said... <laughs> Wait, five to seven <laughs> times a day? Yes, yes, yes. When we yeah. first got together, yes, we, we yes, used we to did. go Woo! in like, Seven times a day. I'm surprised like they Jack standing Black. up. Yeah, we was young bunnies. <laughs> yes, we, were. we was young and dumb. How did y'all hold <laughs> down jobs and have friends or <laughs> go to the grocery store Wait, or... pay a light bill. <laughs> yeah, how did we pull over, go <laughs> quickie in the car and stuff like that? You know, just... Our sex life was very spicy. And so, like I said, we've been together eight years, going on nine. So probably like the fourth or fifth year, you know, things started to slack off. So I said, let me do whatever I have to do to keep my man happy. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to lie to me. You don't have to cheat on me. What you want to do, baby? You want to have a threesome? Well, let, let's get it in. Let's do it. So, you know, I did everything. I did splits. I did back bends. Whatever I need to do to make my man happy. So therefore, you don't have to cheat on me. And we've done all of those things. And now... To, to this day, like, we haven't had sex in months. So I'm wondering, like, are you not attracted to me anymore? You know, watch porn or whatever, and he will look at more porn with women instead of transgender women. So that makes me feel some type of way. It's like, is you into me or not? And so but, you... But, but, that's, 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 a high, that's a high bar to try to maintain. I mean, five to seven times a day, there's got to be some decline somewhere. But, but that's not what she's saying. She's, she said, okay, I saw the decline. 
I addressed it by saying, well, what about this? And what about that? And if he said this or that, he did, she did it. But now she's saying, I'm watching what he's looking at in porn. He's looking at nat- natural born women. Right. And she's now wondering, okay, I'm transgender woman. Is he no longer into me? Is he into... Does he want to be with a natural-born woman? As, Am yeah, I but, right? Yes. Yeah, but that's not yes. it at all, though. It's that we went through a financial stage in life. You know how everybody go through a midlife crisis? It seems like that's what we at. We just recently lost our car. I'd be working 11 to 7 at night, and i still be trying to maintain throughout the day, you know what I'm saying? So we're going through a lot of other things that led this to be like this. It's only been like this for a year, you know what I'm saying? So, so you admit there's been a decrease in your sex life? Yeah, this last year, yeah, up to this point. The fact of my birthday last year, or whatever, I had a birthday party, and, you know, I had it at the club. I do perform and stuff, do shows and stuff at the club, and we had to take separate cars. And I had to have him drive one of my... couple of my family members and one of their promiscuous friends, which is a female. <laughs> and when I mean promiscuous, it's very promiscuous. And we had to go to the club. If you mind, I can show you on the screen. Sure, come over to the plaza. Okay. My birthday party, June 24th, my birthday, y'all. Okay. All right. And this is our house right here. And now this is where the club is. And it probably take about a good 25, 30 minutes to get there. Okay. So we all left at the same time. Now, mind you, Shahid, this young man here left right behind me, pulled out the house the same... Look at that car We're supposed to be in the same direction, heading to the club. Okay. And it took them two and a half hours to get there. Him and this promiscuous Very friend. promiscuous. I mean, <laughs> very, very promiscuous woman. You take 30 minutes, and they take two and a half to two three and hours. Two hours to get there. And you are thinking, were you doing something with yes. this babe? The yes, promiscuous exactly. babe? Yes, Your Honor. All right, yes, why did it take you two and a half hours because to get to a 20 minutes where something's 20 minutes away? Because she had us end up leaving and she going who? to pick up another friend. My wife, I'm saying. My wife had us end up leaving to go pick up another friend with one of her family members. So we pick up the other friend. Plus, remind you, she has food ordered, like wings. You know, you got to wait on them, like 100 wings. So we had to go pick them up. All this is And remind already. you, at first, I'm already a little tipsy because it's her birthday. So, you know, you start in the morning, and this is at night where her birthday's at the club. So we're already tipsy. So and doing this ride with this overly promiscuous friend, uh, did she come on to you? No, she didn't. Did you come on to her? No, I did not. So there was nothing going on during this car ride with you and this overly promiscuous friend? No, <laughs> nothing but agitation and just getting, you know, very aggravated, really, because it was taking so long and they want to stop here and, you know, so certain stuff going on. Ms. Featherston, you <clears throat> believe that something else went down? Definitely, right. because once again, like I said, he said they went to go pick up somebody else, but they never came with the person they was going to go pick up. Mm-hmm. So, the food was pre-ordered already before we even pulled off. They had already called and said the food is ready. So, once again, two and a half hours on a 25, 30-minute drive. And the only thing that shows up, up, him, this promiscuous friend, and the food. That's it? Yes. Do you have any other reasons to believe that he's cheating? I just recently worked the polls when they was doing the election for the judges and and stuff. (laughs) Okay, Okay. I'm glad you cleared that up. I was like... <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up. You know what she said? I was like, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not that poll, Your Honor. And, and I was worried for a minute. And uh, <laughs> we both worked the poll or whatever <clears throat> and everything. And one of our friends, one of my friends, came to pick us up. And my friend said, Oh, I'm tired. Could you drive? I'm like, Oh, I'll drive or whatever, this and that. So we went to get our little work checks or whatever, coming back. And lo and behold, the police pulled us over. It's at nighttime, like 9, 10 o'clock. And they pulled us over for a bus to tail light. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I got my ID, but I had my state ID instead of my driver's license. And the police officer, he was like, oh, you're lying to me. This, that's not your real name. I'm like, this is my state ID. This is my real name. But we're going to take you in, long story short, and run your name. So they had, took me in. A couple hours went by after they did all of or whatever, gave my first phone call. I called my phone. You know what I'm saying? It just rang, go straight to voicemail. I called my phone about 10 times, straight to voicemail. That like the 11th, 12th time I called. I hear so uh-uh, moan and groan or whatever, then the phone hung up real quick. All right, Mr. Johnson, you left your woman in jail? I didn't leave her in jail. They took her to jail. But I did not wait outside. No, I didn't, Your Honor. I did not. 
But the fact of the matter is... But, it, but here's the thing. Why didn't you answer the phone? Because it was dead and it was 1 in the morning. And I didn't have nowhere to charge it up or no charger. But she's nothing. saying that at some point somebody picked up the phone and she heard noise like somebody having sex. And that's not true, though. There was no sex going on. And it had to be something. Well, what was the noise then? Also, because I called Somebody picked phone. up. Who was it that picked up the phone? I don't know. I had left it charging inside of a uh, restaurant because they said they would charge it for me and they put it behind the counter and charge it for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right, Miss Featherston. There was no sex going on in the background. Miss Featherston, you in jail. What is it that you... Exactly what did you hear when the phone picked up? Uh, uh. And then I got... No. <laughs> no, that's not, uh-huh. that's, not that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. You know, Mom, I was asking that question, right? Now, Wait a minute, because that just sounds like, uh, uh, like somebody's trying to figure it out. What? You know. No, I don't. That's some, what I'm saying. Okay, this is because well, well, Or like a get porn chuck. or something. But like I said, I called so many times, and when I did get out at 6 something in the morning, I said, so where you been? And this and that. Oh, the phone was dead. Oh, no, the phone wasn't dead because I called so many times. Let me see the phone. So I get the phone, the entire call log is erased. All the texts... And the phone is right now. Mind you, this is my phone. I'm calling that he has. So why is all? So that means either you've been called to talk, got up with one of my girlfriends. No, that ain't that ain't something uh-uh. went on. So why would he? De- why would you delete all the stuff from her phone? Her phone. Because I was calling asking for help with other people, and I don't like her to see that, so I erased everything, though. But I did not don't try to do it, it intentionally like I was cheating, no, because I was asked that don't question, and well, I did not why, cheat. Why do you think she would care to, of, of who you asked to get her out? Right. Because of the way that we are now, though. We outside and I'm looking at someone too long, she thinks I'm cheating with them or I talk exactly. with them. Mr. Johnson, so that's why I have no friends. Your no story's company. not making sense Excuse because me. first no you say the phone is any. dead and it's charged and doesn't work, and now you're saying that you didn't want her to see who you would call. You were calling for help? I mean, was the phone dead you know, or not? I did have juice, though. I did call for help, though, but I'm saying that did not happen, though. It was dead. Was it dead? I'm saying the not uh and not. the uh did not happen on that phone, and it was dead when she was calling. Well, see, here's the thing. Somebody who's used to having sex five to seven times a day, right? I think knows what it sounds like. Right. I mean, right. if anybody's an expert on what it sounds like, it's somebody who's doing five to seven times a day. Yes. Of course. Go ahead. On top of that, to add on to that, when I got my phone back, before I got locked up or whatever, the phone was clear, the screen was clear. When I got my phone back from the screen was cracked and everything. So my thing yeah, is... Yeah, because I broke it. When I heard the them on the ground, they must have dropped the phone. Somebody done stepped on it in the panic and That ain't everything. what happened, though. You know... So your phone was so broke? Pro- no, it thing. was deleted. All the stuff was deleted? Yep. They're going to prove And you, you have no idea who he called, uh, who and, he texted, And he's not nothing. trustworthy. I can ask him one plus one is two all day. He'll tell you it's four and constantly will tell no. you that it's four. You understand what I'm saying? So you have no... The trust in your relationship has been totally, utterly destroyed. There's no trust at all. Because you got... You all have been together eight years. Yeah, eight years. Inseparable, too. Inseparable for eight years, but you got this hanging over you, and you said that if he's cheating... I'm tired. I got to go. You got to go. I ain't got no more more time. I know I'm a good catch, and before I get too old, honey, I want to build my relationship with somebody that's that know my worth. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know I'm worth more than what I got going on. And as you should, if I'm cheating. eight years... And, I Mr. Johnson, you recognize what's on the line here, don't you? Yeah, I know what's on the line. Yeah, I already... You know what's at risk. Yeah, I do. Mr. Color, I think we got enough information. I think we've heard enough. Tell me what we got. Here's what we're looking at. Mr. Johnson shows up two and a half hours later from a trip that should take about 20 minutes, and you have concerns that... He is no longer attracted to you because you're not a natural-born woman. Yeah. And the time when he should be coming to get you out of jail, he's not answering the phone, somebody answers, and you do hear sex noises, and when you get the phone back, all the numbers have been deleted. And all the text messages. And all the text messages. Because of that, this court has done a complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call licensed private investigator Brett Magleby to determine... Is he cheating? (laughs) Mr. Magleby, how are you? Thanks for being here. Thank you. So, in order to get to the truth regarding the infidelity allegations and Mr. Johnson, you did an eye detect test. Can you please explain 
how an eye detect test works. During a test, a person sits in front of an eye detect computer. The eye tracking camera monitors involuntary eye movements. During the course of a 30 minute eye detect test, there are more than a million points of data gathered. At the conclusion of the test, a proprietary algorithm analyzes the data collected and provides a truthful or deceptive score. You asked Mr. Johnson a series of questions regarding the allegation. Since being in a relationship with Ms. Featherston, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone Ms. Featherston is not aware of? How did he respond to the accusation? He denied having sex with anyone. What did the eye detect test determine? The eye detect test determined that Mr. Johnson was truthful. We got to cheat on you for nothing now. All right, Ms. Featherston, what do you have to say to Mr. Johnson? I'm sorry, baby. No, she got to kiss my feet. Oh! So I'm just playing. We don't know too much now. I don't think that's going to ever happen. But I am sorry. <laughs> Because I've, I've, I know I've caused some hell, but it's just that the fact that I... Go on over there. I know you're trying to get I to our like seat. I like that. It's too much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling? I feel great now. You all are engaged and have been together for 10 years, but your wedding plans are on hold until you find out whether or not Mr. Biznoth is cheating. Please tell me why you've initiated this case. I am here today because I do not believe that David has been faithful. I believe that he has been lying to me, that he has been cheating, and uh, even though he says that he isn't, I believe I know that he is. We have two kids together. Um, we've been engaged since 2014. Oh, boy. Um, but I refuse to wear the ring until I know that he's being true, that what we have is real. So you are here for answers, and you feel so firmly that he's not being truthful with you that you are not even wearing your engagement ring. Right. You just have it. Where do you have it? Where do you keep it? Um, I, I don't know. It's been that long. I have to go dig it out. Wow. <laughs> wow. Mr. Bisnaw, because of what she's accusing you of, she doesn't even wear her ring, doesn't even know where it is. <laughs> How does that make you feel, being Makes accused? Me feel not good at all. It's been, you know, we first met each other, and uh, it was love at first sight. I, I try to prove myself time after time after time. Besides coming here, I offered to go pay for a lie detector test on my own so I could get this out of the way, because it's holding our love and uh, us moving forward in our future. All right. Ms. Scott, why do you think he's cheating? Well, one, when it comes to him working for a rideshare company, mm -hmm. on a regular, he'll get dressed normally, he's gonna be driving all day, he'll be comfortable, and he'll go to work, which is fine. But this particular day, he got all dressed up, fancy, blinged out to drive. Um, I was trying to reach out to him, trying to call him. He was not answering. Uh, the one time he actually picked up his phone, he's, like, all excited and hyped, like, yeah, it's lit in Saratoga. I'm so busy, I can't talk to you. I have to call you back. Wow. Um, I didn't speak to him for the rest of that night. Um, he didn't come to the house that night. So he was busy driving. Right, he was working. And what's wrong with him looking nice for his job? I mean... There's nothing wrong with it. It just seemed out of character. Is it okay if I show you when, um, when I did see him the next day? Um, I'd like to show you over here sure. on the screen. Sure. Step over to the monitor, okay. please. So I go through his phone. Finally, he comes. I ask him where he was, and he just said he was at his mom's, but I didn't believe him. So I went to his maps on his phone uh, uh -huh. to see if I could see where he was. Um, there was no history. It was no location. There was... The location was disabled. He wasn't there. So he told you where he was, but you didn't believe him? No. Because it's been disabled. Right. And one, why is it disabled? Uh -huh. And two, so I further investigated he was working. So I went to the, the Drive app, and I went to go see how much money he made, the rides in Saratoga, you know, and there was zero dollars and zero And that was cents. the day he said he was working all day, right? Yeah. There were no trips. There was no money made that day. So that's another thing that was like, what's that about? No money, no trips, no time online, 
No yeah. toll, no nothing. Zero, 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 zero. Yes. And this is the same day, Mr. Cutler, mm -hmm. that he was dressed and blinged out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But, and he never oh. went right. to work. Can I explain what happened Yeah, that day? please. please. All right. So that particular day, we got into a heated argument. And it came to a point where she started putting some of my clothes in the bag. So I said I was going to leave because our arguments always get heated. Why do you have zero and you told her you were working? That's what I want to know. She, she kept calling me, calling me, calling me after you just told me to leave the house and don't come back. So instead of coming back or answer the phone and make more problems, I told her I was actually working, that I'm in Saratoga, because there's time that she just showed up out of nowhere at where I'm at. And I didn't want no confrontation. And that's why I have doubt and trust but issues and concerns. It, this doesn't make any sense. She put you out. It's not the yeah, first time. Uh, well, and I probably <laughs> not. But she put you out. Yes. And you say, I'm at work. So why lie? Well, if she's I, so, that good, you might as well just... To avoid a heated argument, because that day that argument was heated. And we, it was all about I'm being accused of cheating once again. Ah. Uh, so this uh, is like a nonstop, every day, every week thing for me. She doesn't understand how much she means to me. She was like, the first woman, because my last ex... OK, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you get ready to drag me down a rabbit hole I'm not really interested in. Because well, what you told one. me doesn't make sense. So. What else do you believe is she? Well, I have another one. We're sitting in the dining room um, in the house. Phone's ringing. He's not answering the phone. Um, that's not like him. He would easily normally answer. Um, so I get curious. I'm like, so why are you not answering your phone? Oh, it's just my family member. And I'm like, OK. And, um, but it was like several phone calls. So From I... From that family member? Yes. OK. So can you it... see the name on the phone? Yes, I okay. can. OK. And is, it, is that a family member's name? Yes, it is. OK. But when I, I go to call the number back, um, lo and behold, there's a female on the other end. And it is not his family member. OK, and that was my next question. Member, the family member was a male. It was a male's number. But then when I pick up on the other end, it's a female. Naturally, I'm like, well, who are you? And she's like, happened. well, he reached out to me. He was trying to get in contact with me. Um, they, they were talking about they were supposed to meet up um, in New York City, but that never happened. Not, all those plans were through. She said she was married. She had a husband. She's telling you all this? Yeah, but it, it doesn't make sense was when I look through the call log and I see that they've spoke several times, even sometimes at length, um, if she's Tell married and has a though. husband, why are you guys chit-chatting? What possibly could you be talking about? What did you say to him? Um, well, he said it was from before when we were split up. But we, uh, we're, we're together, and she's, it's recent phone calls, so it can't no, be when you were... That's not true. OK. Right, so, Mr. Bisnoff, all right, let's, so... take, let's take this in chunks. I'm going to stay right here all with... Right. You had a phone number saved in your phone... Yep. Uh, ..with a male family member's name... Yes. ..but the number of a woman who's not a family member. That is correct. That is correct. Yes. OK. Who is this woman to you? Right, what so... kind of relationship did you have with her? This girl's a friend from a while back when I, in my childhood. So what happened... At the time we were separated, I had put something on social media that I can't believe I'm being accused of cheating every day in my life, blah, blah, blah. So she actually gave me her phone number on social media, and I called her. I haven't seen her in over 20-something years, haven't heard from her. Mr. She... Bisnoff, you're taking me the long way. Why did you put it in your phone under the name of a family member? Right, Male so family member. At the time we were separated, and I didn't want her to know and that I was talking with her. OK, thank but you. I did talk that to her. That was the short answer. You yes. were talking to her. Yeah. You didn't want yeah. her to know, right? And she tried to convince me to come down to New York City, visit her, oh. but I never did. So why else do you think he's cheating? While putting away the laundry, I came across a shirt that had another female's name on it. And I'm asking him, whose shirt is this? Where did this shirt come from? Because you didn't recognize it. No. It wasn't your shirt. No. And this is in with his laundry. Yes. <laughs> OK. So, right, so she confronts you about it. What yes. do you say? So what happened was my family member went and did laundry. So as she's putting the clothes away, she comes across the shirt and right off the rip starts saying, oh, this is the girl you're messing with. This is the girl you're... Whose shirt was it? I don't know. All right. So you said a family member messed yes. up. Put somebody else's shirt in your laundry and it happened. got mixed the, up. The shirt has nothing to do with me. All right. That's, that's one story. So, Ms. Scott, let me ask you this. If you find out he is cheating, what does that mean for your relationship? 
I'm upset. It's not fair, and, you know, I shouldn't have to go through this because this has been going on too long. It's been a lot of back and forth. It's been, no, I didn't, yes, you did, and, no, I didn't, yes, I did, and I just need a answer today. You have a <laughs> decade into this relationship. Yes. That's a long time. That's a long time. Mr. Bisnaw. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, your relationship is at stake. Yes, it is. Because she says she can't continue this way. Yeah. She has to be able to trust you 24-7. I, I totally understand, and... I want her to know that I love her and I've never cheated on her. And I don't have nothing to hide. So, like, at the end of this whole thing, when it comes out that I am telling the truth the whole time, it's like, I don't know what to do with the pain now that I've suffered all these years of everyday accusations and all this cheating. So you're saying you're in pain with all these accusations? Yeah. Yep. All right. So you need the pain to stop. You yes. need the accusations to stop. Especially the point when she was first pregnant with my first son. She offered just to have my kid. It was like... I don't know. It just changed everything, my perspective in life and everything. And All for right. her to think that, after I explained to her how much everything meant to me, it still hurts up to this point. Well... well you came here to get some answers, and we're going to help you find those answers. Mm -hmm. This court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call certified cyber expert Gus Dimitrellis and certified polygraph examiner Dave Lawrence to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Ron, please escort the gentleman in. Come on. Got two. Good day, gentlemen. How are you all? It's Ron, Your Honor. How are you? Hey, Your Honor. It's good to see you. You too. Mr. Dimitrellis, would you state your credentials, please, for the court? I'm a certified cyber expert and retired Secret Service agent serving under two presidential administrations in the area of technical security and electronic crimes. Now, tell us what you did to investigate this case. I conducted a thorough forensic examination on Mr. Biznas' cell phone. The examination recovers pictures, videos, chats, internet history, even if they're deleted. In this case, I was specifically asked to look for any evidence of cheating by Mr. Biznas. So, did you find any communication related to cheating? I did, Your Honor. All right. What, what did you find? Mr. Biznoth was communicating with unknown women using Facebook Messenger, Snapchat, texting apps, which we call burner apps. Was there anything that you found that was of interest? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me about that. Mr. Biznoth was receiving graphic pictures from women, usually by his request. Okay. And specifically on his phone, I located four pictures of the same woman a scantily clad blonde woman. She'll tell you where they came from. It has nothing to do with me. She'll go on, like, dating websites and I have done that. I and have... try to talk to people. No. She'll go on my Facebook. And it's funny he brought that up, because we anything, were just talking about this. If anything, that one was me investigating, um, going through his phone. I searched the number that kept calling that he was calling, and it came up to that female. And it was and an escort was... service, and then um, it was her pictures for her profile. So it was so... the same blonde yes. woman four times? And I... Okay, wait, 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 wait. Right. Hold on. Yep. Before you tell me what the problem okay. is, I got a question. All right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Have you contacted an escort service? No. Oh, that number, one of my family members in our household had this number. So after 90 days, the number changed. Right. Once she accused me of saying that was an escort service, I called the number, and it's a 12-year-old kid on the other line. And he said he only had the number for a week. So I was explaining to her that this number was being recycled all the time. The information he has is right. I have no li nothing to lie about. Okay. So, but you but, still maintain you're not yeah, cheating. I'm not a cheater. <laughs> all right. Well, this court did a further investigation, <clears throat> and Mr. Lawrence, you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Biznoth. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Mr. Lawrence, you asked Mr. Biznoth, during your relationship with Ms. Scott, other than when you were on a break, did you have sexual intercourse with any woman other than Ms. Scott? What was his response to that question? He said, no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Ms. Scott, you're yes. standing there, the tears running down your face. What do those tears represent? Part of me wanted to believe... Yeah, we need to take that back over. ...that I was wrong. I'm done. Get Don't be done head. now. Don't give up now. That's crap. Straight up. Ron, can you check and see if Mr. Biznoth will come back? Yes, Sean. So, I'm just disappointed. Because there was a flicker of hope. Just yeah. a flicker of hope that what you had been feeling and experiencing wasn't true. Right. That he wouldn't do that. Right. All right, I would like to say something. I want to apologize for walking out, but I would like to take that test over right now again, because that is impossible. I've never, ever been with any other woman or talked to anyone as she was telling you. I've never done it. I'm willing to take that test right now, right here. And, and when we were doing the test, he kept telling me that I'm controlling my breathing. Like, I breathe heavy. Oh, is that true? Did, was there a conversation about his deep breathing? We had that conversation several times, Your Honor. Control breathing is considered one of the countermeasures of polygraph. And what is a countermeasure? When somebody's trying to purposely distort the charts. He probably Googled it and figured out what he could do. To what and he so, you you when you phone, told him not Google to that. do that, you were trying to make sure that he, wa he wasn't um, interfering with the results of the polygraph. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. I don't have anything to say. No, I don't, <laughs> I even, I don't even have... I'm done. Thank you. I'm gonna catch my flight and go home. Grow up. That's... 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 <laughs> Is this behavior typical? Yes, it is. You should have a crown in heaven if you've been putting up with this mess for 10 years.